So Sarah, whenever you're ready, I think we have you on mute still, but you feel free to take over the presentation and... Hi, hi, thank you for the intro, Colin. I am a CRM analyst and I've been working with the products since version 4.0. I work for um, DMI, um, former colleague of Daryl Labar, um, and a couple of my other colleagues are on the line today, Chris Aiello and Vikram Toop. Um, I like to stretch config as far as I can. And earlier this year, I saw this lovely article about automating business process stage progression um, and best practices for doing that. And the ability to automate these transitions via workflow is a new thing from the release in um, fall 2016 when processes became an entity. So um, in that update, when processes became an entity, you can now access them in workflow. Um, and this article didn't go very deep into um, the detail on configuring the workflow. So I did um, the legwork and I thought I'd show you guys what I learned and a couple of applications for this, um, for automating the stage transitions. So um, when I got started doing this, like the first thing I thought was, okay, I want to progress the stage on the lead. So I'm going to create my workflow and it's going to be on the lead entity. And that's, that was like a mistake at first. So um, that's definitely not how to do it because you can't uh, progress the stage that way. So this was my first shot. And I realized when I went to try and update like the BPF that I didn't have that option. So what you have to do is configure the workflow for the entity and the entity is specific for each process. Um, so um, I have two different processes that I've set up workflows for. Um, one's called lead to sale and one is called lead to sale help desk. They're used by different user groups. And I'm going to show a couple different applications for each of these um, stage progressions automations. Um, so let's kind of step through what I did here. Um, this is a real time workflow. So as I make changes in the form, the workflow is going to run right, right away and actively update the form. You can also convert it to a background um, workflow or not a, <laughs> leave it as a background workflow and never convert it to real time when you're setting it up. And that gives you more options here, which I thought was interesting. So um, if I convert this to a background workflow for my selection on my options for automating, I can actually select lead or process here. So I'll show you that real quick. So you could actually trigger this workflow based on an update to the lead entity or to the process. But if it's real time, then you just have access to the process. Um, so this workflow is going to be activated or activated when the process is applied. So um, when I create a new lead and it attaches um, the process or um, the next one I'm going to show you is where the user changes. And so therefore a different process is applied to the lead. So that would activate this workflow. And then I also have it um, configured to activate whenever the active stage changes. So for the best practices article, the main lesson um, or the main point of this article was to avoid this invalid stage transition error. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if some of you have come across that before, but basically 
Um, it's if you try to go ahead more than one stage on the business process flow. So if you were on the first stage and you tried to progress it th to the third stage, then you would get that error. So whenever you're building these workflow, the important thing to remember is that you can only progress to one stage up at a time. So when I have built this logic here, you can see that I'm checking a condition of what the active stage is and then setting my stage to the next stage up. So on the lead, and I'm going to demo this to you, on the lead, the payment info stage comes right before the schedule install stage. And this is a customized, um, so this is not like the general out of, um, out of box lead to sale, but I think um, once I demo, everybody will catch right on to this flow. Um, and so then my next clause here is checking that the active stage is the schedule install stage. And then if that's true, then it'll progress it to the next one. So this is the final stage and this is the fourth stage. So if I set this up and I said, um, if active stage is process payment, and then I set my properties to set the active state, set the stage to sale recap, I would get that lovely error that's described in this article. So that's one um, good to know thing as you're configuring a workflow or even code that dynamically is progressing the stage for the user. So um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and activate this process and show you this work. So the, the business case for this, so here's the, the business case um, that I think that a, a, situ, a workflow like this would be useful. If I had an external system and those, say I was processing payment and schedule install in an external system, but I still wanted to represent those as part of the process in CRM, but I didn't want the user to have to click through them every time, then this would be very useful. So that's kind of the business case that I, I mean, this is not even, a, this is a made up business case, but I think that um, it's something that could be used for a client in the future. This is just a, a sample, so it's not an actual, um, but this is a customized environment for that is, um, so actually these are not external systems in real life, but we're making a pretend business case that these are external systems and we want to represent these stages in the business process flow, but we don't want the user to have to click through them. So I've goosed some data up um, and I've created a lead where I've gotten all of my data filled in through this point. And if I hit next stage here, what you're going to see is that workflow work and it's going to go straight to sale recap. So it skipped right over these two according to my handy dandy workflow. So let's just kind of step through that. So this workflow actually ran twice and it was activated twice because the workflow updated the stage the first time. So um, the active stage was process payment and payment process was yes. And so the workflow got activated and it updated the stage to schedule install. 
And then once the stage was updated again, the workflow was activated again, and it met this condition where the active stage was scheduled job and the job had been scheduled. So it bumped it to sale recap. So I need two steps. So the one hold back here is that it's not, so we have some custom um, JavaScript going on here. And I know that this is something a, a lot of people have done, but basically we show um, a section of the form based on what stage the user is in. So not necessarily the active stage of the business process flow, but the stage that the user um, is on in the form. So I have to click here. I have to click. So even though it sets my active stage, I still have to click once to go to show my sale recap. Now, if I was in a standard out of box form and I wasn't dynamically showing, and there's obviously some very custom stuff in here, but if I wasn't dynamically showing certain form sections based on what um, Chevron I'm on, then the extra click wouldn't be necessary and it'd be even more beautiful. So that's one scenario. Um, you've got an external system and you want to represent the stages in the BPF, but you don't want the user to have to click through next stage, next stage um, to get to the actual stage they're going to be executing in CRM. So if if you had an external um, system updating these, then you could um, potentially have updates to the lead triggering this progression as well. Um, so say that external system sets this field to payment process just, or they set the um, scheduled job, then those lead updates could trigger the stage progression. So that's my lovely first scenario um, where we could progress some stages. The other scenario I came up with, and this is um, actually a real thing that was complained about, um, and most of you have probably seen it, that when you switch a process and you go to a different process, it just starts you off at the first stage. And one of the things that we're doing um, for this client is we've got um, two different business process flows for two different groups of users. So what I'm going to do is log in as the second user group and show you um, this other workflow scenario. So. so once again, I'll show you this one. I'm on offer and credit check. I hit next stage and it goes straight to sale recap. So that was our first workflow. Second workflow. To demo this, I need to update my role because we do the application of the EPF based on the role. So I'm gonna update my role real quick and clear my cache. So my first one only had two steps. Um, for those two steps that we wanted to skip over for external systems, this one I set up a little bit differently. Um, and I should have added some descriptions in here. Um, but basically, 
I've got a clause for each stage so that when the help desk user, so we've got two different types of users, a sales agent and a help desk user, and they each have their own BPF. So if the help desk user opens the lead form and it applies the help desk BPF, then it's gonna set the stage based on these conditions. So out of box, it would just set the stage to the first stage. Um, so with this progression, we were actually able to configure this stage progression automatically. So we check, we have um, a check once again to prevent that lovely error of invalid stage progression. We check the current stage. And then we set it to the next stage. So the same scenario is going to happen here with this workflow. Um, the same scenario is going to be here for this workflow where it's getting hit multiple times when the conditions are met. So um, if I open a lead that should be on the schedule install stage, then it's going to go it's going to run once and it's going to set the stage um, to offer and credit check. So that's the second stage. Then it's going to run again and set it to process payment. Then it's going to run again and set it to schedule job and run again and set it to the sale recap. So it's progress. The way the workflow is configured is that it's going to progress the stages one at a time. And because the condition gets met multiple times, the workflow will acti activate multiple times and you can progress multiple stages at once. So it took me a little bit to figure out how, how to get that right, um, but that's how it works. So um, in the case of um, something like data migration, this would also be very useful. Um, so if you import a bunch of opportunities um, based on conditions of what data is populated and what data is not populated. Um, you could set up a workflow like this so that when the user opens up the form, it'll progress the stage to the correct stage. So um, I'm going to go ahead and um, demo this to you too. I think so. I didn't try it with a custom entity, um, but I think that any um, process is available because the process is its own entity. So to answer your question, Michael, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think so, yes. So I'm going to open um, this lead again, Jimmy Cricket, and it'll take a second. It's going to load. So it'll load initially. So right now my process is Defenders Lead to Sale. And you can see it's kind of working here, and it's going to set the process to the help desk, hopefully. I might need to close my browser.
Let me just double check my roll, and I think I might need to close. Okay, here it goes. Sorry about that. So now you can see that the lead to sale help desk business process flow has been applied. And based on those conditions, it set my, those conditions in my workflow, it set my active stage to schedule install. So without this workflow, it would just set it here and the user would have to progress through each of these stages. I'll show you that one more time. So I'm on my lead to sale. It refreshes. It applies the workflow for lead to sale help desk, and it sets the stage. So um, a, a caveat here is I'm not setting the stage to this. I'm setting the stage based on attributes of the lead. I'm not setting the stage based on the stage that was previously set in the other workflow. Um, but based on the information that we've collected so far, we can kind of determine what stage they're at in the process, if that makes sense. So. Um, for example, if I've got um, a scheduled time slot or if my payment's been processed or if I have the last bit of information, um, promo sale on the offer and credit check, then we can go ahead and progress the stage forward. And I can see where my stage is getting updated here. So um, that was it for my short presentation. Does anybody have any questions or ideas, comments? And pull my workflow back up here. So if I deactivate this, I can show you what it does on box. Yes. So here it's going to switch and it's just going to set it to maybe my customizations didn't finish or this didn't finish deactivating. Switching to lead to sell help desk. 
it's still active. Maybe I need to clear my cache. Anyway, I think we've all seen a business process change out of box. Basically, it just goes to the first stage. Anybody questions? Michael, was it just you who had a question? So thanks, Sarah. I think yeah, if you've answered Michael's question about the custom entities, then I haven't seen any others. Does anybody else have any other further questions that they want to ask Sarah or see a demo about for business processes? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask or type into the text chat. Well, I really appreciate everybody joining today and um... This was a fun little exercise for me, um, trying to figure out um, this progression because I had never done it before. So it was cool to see it work. I'll point out that this is Daryl Labar, by the way. Um, I'll, I'll point out this is Sarah's first time presenting. And if any of you are working on something that uh, you think would be uh, great to share with the community we'd love to have you we're looking for speakers all the time so um i feel like if this reminds you of something that you worked on recently that would be something to to share then uh please contact colin or, or myself or, or julie uh probably on twitter is probably the easiest way to get a hold of us uh, you can also i think contact us through the xm virtual website but uh go ahead and, and send us an email um and get a hold of us and, and we'll uh, just meet with you and, and see what you have and, and try to put you on the schedule All right. Well, thank you, Sarah. It's been very informative. And again, everybody, we will post the recording uh, probably later this afternoon uh, so that any, you can share it or rewatch it uh, with any of your colleagues as well. So again, feel free to reach out, as Daryl said, and we're, we're happy to have you. But thank you, everybody, for your time today. And thank you, Sarah. Thanks. Thank you.